you want me to say? So while the public school's telling them they're animals, they're the product of natural selection, we tell them God loves you, God's created you, you have a purpose in life. Here, children as young as six are schooled as Christian soldiers in God's army. Their aim? To take back America for Christ. You talk dirty just like all the other kids talk dirty, and it's time to clean up your act. Father, we just wash them with the water of your word. We say no more, devil, no more. Say it, boys and girls, in the name of Jesus. You know exactly what you need to repent of. Name it. Name it out loud. Name it. What do you need to be forgiven of? We break the power of the devil in this nation. Claim that righteous government. Jesus, it's God. that we should be uh, actively involved in this, this historic moment. And if the church across this country, believers, can come together and take a stand, I think it's going to have a powerful, powerful impact on this process. We dare not sleep through this point of decision because, frankly, future generations depend on us. Pray urgently that God's perfect will will be done. We are engaged today in what they call culture war. We didn't start it, but we, by His grace, are going to end it. And we should say, yes, we want to reclaim America for Christ. this way is there anyone in here that believes that God can do anything God can do anything we can just say God fix the world Becky Fisher is a Pentecostal children's minister she runs conferences and an annual summer camp for evangelical kids across America I can go into a playground of kids that don't know anything about Christianity lead them to the Lord in a matter of just no time at all and and just moments later they can be seeing visions and hearing the voice of god because they're so open they are so usable in christianity this is a sick old world well then let's just fix it somebody get your tools out and let's just fix this old world kids you've got to change things we got too many Christian grown-ups that are fat and lazy. They don't want to give up their evening meal. They don't want to fast for a three-day fast or a 40-day fast or whatever. Do you know Muslims train their children from the time they're five years old to fast during the month of Ramadan? Listen, we hold the keys. We can change the world. Boys and girls can change the world? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. I need you to get serious, serious with God. Say, God, I'm here to be trained. I'm here for an education. I'm willing, God. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll say what you want me to say. In Jesus' name.
If you look at the world's population, one third of that 6.7 billion people are children under the age of 15. One third. Where should we be putting our efforts? Where should we be putting our focus? I'll tell you where our enemies are putting it. They're putting it on the kids. And they're putting hand grenades in their hands. They're teaching them how to put on bomb belts. They're teaching them how to use rifles. They're teaching them how to use machine guns. It's no wonder with that kind of intense training and discipling that those young people are ready to kill themselves for the cause of Islam. I want to see young people who are as committed to the cause of Jesus Christ as the young people are to the cause of Islam. I want to see them as radically laying down their lives for the gospel as, as they are uh, over in, in Pakistan and in Israel and, and Palestine and all those different places, you know, because we have, excuse me, but we have the truth. We've got to stand up and take back the land. In 2001, Pastor Becky Fisher started the Kids on Fire summer camp in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Evangelical families from around the United States attend. They believe that to obtain salvation, we must be born again by accepting Jesus as our savior. 43% of Christians in America become born again before the age of 13. And said that we are Levi is 12 years old and from St. Robert, Missouri. He's taught at home by his mom. All right, let's go over some things. What if you had to go to a school where the teacher said creationism is stupid? And you're stupid if you believe in it. I think they should win. Well, or what if you had to go to a school where your teacher said evolution is stupid and you're stupid if you believe in it? I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> you wouldn't mind it. If you look at creationism, oh. you realize it's the only possible answer. 75% of homeschooled children in the United States are evangelical Christians. God didn't say have children and give my kids to someone else for eight hours a day. And if I can homeschool them as well as the school can public school them, why would I send them somewhere else for eight hours a day? Died, was buried, three days later he rose from the dead. Wasn't Jesus only a man? No. Jesus Christ is Almighty God. Rachel, it's your turn. I know. In the name of Jesus, make a good hit. All right, Rachel. This side of it's a bowl. Okay. Rachel is nine years old and dreams of one day spreading the word of God. Hi. Um, God's just telling me that he, you're on his mind and he just wants to take you and he just wants to love on you and he has special plans for you in your life and he just wants you to be able to follow him with your whole heart. And Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Welcome. When I grow up, I just, I always thought it would be kind of fun to be one of those, like, people who paint nails and stuff, because you would get a chance to tell them about the Lord. I mean, just relaxing Christian music in the background, you know, doing it, you know what I mean? It's Children are on loan to us from God, and someday we're gonna have to answer to God on how we raised our children. And I'm like, Lord, you've given me this daughter, and how am I supposed to train her? What am I supposed to do now, right? 
and I'd bring her to places where she can learn this, well, from Becky, from Pastor Carol, from different people. But the Lord told me what you need to train her in is train her about character. Let's just walk in among the pews and stuff and, and just pray over the seats. Yeah. Yeah, in the name of Jesus, we just speak over every person that's sitting in these chairs this week. And we, Lord, we just ask to, to be covered with the blood of Jesus. Open hearts, Lord, open hearts because of storms or any other reason. Now I just pray over this equipment. We speak over the PowerPoint presentations, the, all of the video projectors, and we say, devil, we know what you love to do in meetings like this, and we say you will not, in Jesus' name, you will not prevent this message from going out. No Up to 200 kids from all over America attend the week-long camp, paying around $60 a day for the around $60 a day for the paying around $60 a day for the privilege. Father, we just ask you in the mighty name of Jesus that this will be a defining moment in their lives. Father, I pray that Jesus will be glorified on this camp. See, we're talking this week about how the devil uses tactics to destroy our lives. The first tactic that he uses is to tempt you with sin. You see, when you f but sin is designed to destroy you. The devil goes after the young. Those who cannot fend for themselves. That's why we're trying to help you. We're trying to warn you. And while I'm on the subject, let me say something about Harry Potter. Warlocks are enemies of God. And I don't care what kind of hero they are. They're an enemy of God. And had it been in the Old Testament, Harry Potter would have been put to death. Amen. Generation is going to stand for purity and righteousness and holiness. And you're going to serve the Lord all the days of your life. And we declare all those things over you. I believe this so much that I have given my whole life to see to it that you get there. I sense in my heart tonight what I heard the Lord say is that there's some kids here that say they're Christians, that go to church all the time, but you're one thing when you're at church and you're another thing when you're at school with your friends. You're a phony and a hypocrite. You do things you shouldn't do. You talk dirty just like all the other kids talk dirty. And it's time to clean up your act. Come up here and get washed. Because we can't have phonies in the army of God. If that's you, put your hands up here. Whoa, baby. Wash your hands. Father, we just wash them with the water of your word. We say no more, devil, no more. Say it, boys and girls, in the name of Jesus. You know exactly what you need to repent of. Name it. Name it out loud. Name it. What do you need to be forgiven of? No more wishy-washy. No more hypocrisy. 
Now you get somewhere and pray and you start doing some repenting here. God just created humans that ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, resulted in sin and death. I got some dripping with blood here somewhere. Uh, there, that looks better. And I want to move these later. That's better. So far, camp has been awesome. I love being in the presence of God. God is not in every church. There are certain church, they're called dead churches. And the people there, they sit there like this. We worship you, God. We worship you, God. They sing like three songs, then they listen to a sermon. Churches that God likes to go to are churches where they're jumping up and down, shouting his name, and just praising him. They're not acting, they're not quiet. We worship you. They're, hallelujah, God! You know, and... They told me that I was gonna preach tonight. I'm really excited about preaching to kids. I've never really preached to a whole bunch of kids that I didn't know. I feel, I mean, I really feel, I really feel that we're a key generation, I really do. I really feel that, that this generation is a key generation to Jesus coming back. That is exactly where. I don't write the sermon. God writes the sermon. I mean, I can feel it sometimes while I'm writing. I can feel it in my arm. So someone's holding my arm and I'm, while I'm writing, right? And I feel when I go up there and I start preaching, the Holy Spirit is gonna come out of me. And that, that ain't gonna be me up there preaching. It is, but you know, it's not gonna be me. He's not gonna sit around either. If Satan's not sitting around, you shouldn't be sitting around. Satan will try to trip you off your path, off of your race, off the course. Don't let him do that. In Jesus' name, do not let Satan get you off what God has for you. And we are a generation that needs to rise up, that needs to rise up and run with that baton, run with our whole heart, everything we've got. Who's ready for some fun tonight? You're not going to be the same person that you came on this camp. You're going to be a different person. You're going to be radical. You're going to be on fire. How many of you want to be those who would give up their lives for Jesus? They came to your schools and they, they took Jesus out of your schools. But one thing they couldn't do was take Jesus out of your hearts. We can't just sit back and accept corrupt government. I believe God wants to put godly, righteous people in government. How many of you want to break this cup of the power of the enemy over government? Break this cup. You break that thing in the name of Jesus. Righteous government, God. Righteous government. Lord, come on, proclaim that righteous government. Every time we break a cup, there's a release in the spirit. We break the power of the devil in this nation.
Guest speakers are a regular feature of Becky's camp, and the political message of Christianity is never far away. Okay, we're going to welcome Mr. President now. Well, talk to him. Say, welcome, welcome, President Bush. We're glad you're here. And I want you to bless him. Speak a blessing to him. Would you do that? Reach your hand to speak a blessing to him. Do some warfare over him. Do some warfare. He has surrounded himself with spirit-filled people. So pray in the spirit over him. Here he is. He's come to visit us. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Tell him, Mr. President. Mr. President. One nation under God. excited tonight. I usually talk to, to big people, but tonight I get to talk maybe to the most important generation in American history. Whoa. And I'm not just joking. Where's the young man? The young man with the long hair. Right there. Come here, son. Just stand right with me. What's your name? My name's Levi. Levi? Wow, well, it's a great name, Levi. You like Levi's name? Yeah. Here's the deal. Before you were born, God knew you. You were created intimately by God. Is that incredible? God wrote a book about your life, and he wrote Levi. Levi would be a God seeker from an early age. And he would become a voice that touched America. And he would not sell out in his teenage years. He would go for God all those days and he'd be a man of prayer. And in his 20s, he'd begin to shake things real strong for God in the nation. God's dream, the novel of Levi's life, signed God. What do you think of that? Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> You're pretty cool. Now listen to me, you guys. Since 1973, up to 50 million babies never had a chance to fulfill the dreams God had for their lives. That's sad, isn't it? Do you know a third of your friends could be here tonight, but they never made it? A person's a person, no matter how small. <laughs> God has a dream for them like he has a dream for you. Do you see that? It's kind of awesome, isn't it? Look at that. Seven weeks old. Tonight, I believe something is going to start tonight that can change America. Seriously. Kids, I believe that you are the beginnings of a movement that can raise up a moral outcry that can overthrow abortion in America and can turn this. Would you like to be a part of that kind of company? sins of my nation. 
God end abortion and send revival to America louder. Jesus, I plead your blood over my sins and the sins of my nation. God end abortion and send revival to America. let go of them. You have no power taking people's lives. Only God has that power. No more, Lord. No more. No more. No more. Adults. Fear of the God. Fear of the God. Children praying to you, God. Hear from heaven, God's tired. Too long, Lord. Abortion, God. You made a covenant with God tonight that you're going to pray to end abortion in America. Don't take that lightly. Don't be a promise breaker. Don't be a promise breaker. Be a history maker. Colorado Springs has the greatest concentration of evangelical organizations in America. The kids from camp have arrived to see one of America's leading preachers. We've decided the Bible is the word of God. We don't have to have a general assembly about what we believe. It's written in the Bible. All right, so we don't have to debate about what we should think about homosexual activity. It's written in the Bible. Pastor Ted Haggard is president of the National Association of Evangelicals, representing 30 million people. He talks to President Bush and his advisors every Monday. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we pray for President Bush as he's preparing to elect a new Supreme Court nominee. Healthy way. Kids are everything. They love the evangelical message. God loves them. The Bible's the word of God. They are gifts from God. So while the public school's telling them they're animals, they're the product of natural selection, we tell them, God loves you. God's created you. You have a purpose in life. I mean, the kids are just loving it. And we're growing. Churches, it's got enough growth to essentially sway every election. If the evangelicals vote, they determine the election. It's a fabulous life. Towards the end of the camp, some of the children have come to Washington to attend a pro-life rally. Bible, you see the big towers here and the big buildings and the big men. And God says the prayers of little children can shake kings. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're being trained to go out and train others train others to be God's army and to do God's will, what he wants. I love America. I love the American lifestyle. But at the same time, I look at this sick old world and I go, God, let's get out of here. Knowing what I know, how do I not give my whole life? to helping other people, children, teenagers, or adults, come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. How could I enjoy heaven with the knowledge that I never told people that meant so much to me about Jesus? 